Hello everyone. Nick from Struusoft here and ready to do a nice webinar. Let me just remove my own face here from my screen uh, about erection planning, crane times, project planning. With you today is me, Nikolai, and uh, I brought my colleague Pascal as well. Say hi, Pascal. Hi, everyone. <laughs> nice to see you and, all. Uh, and you, Nick, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will do the first part of the webinar. Maybe Pascal will interrupt me if there is something he feels like I should let you guys know. Um, and when we get to the second part, which is the notifications, then Pascal will take over and we'll look a little bit on notifications as well, which is the automatic notification system in impact. So now I have this control panel from the GoToWebinar. I'll just hide that. So now I can see what you guys, my screen is, is free from clutter here. So this is the title of the webinar. My screen is here. This is why I'm looking away from you guys. And uh, basically what I want to start with is give you a short agenda of what it is we're going to talk about today so that you know when you need to listen closely and when you need to listen even more closely. So first of all, uh, we'll do some erection sequencing. I made a small building earlier with uh, six floors. So we're going to erection, uh, plan the erection of that building. Then uh, we're going to have impact to do something for us, some automatic planning. And then we're going to look at a follow-up, a high-level follow-up that impact creates out of the automatic planning uh, for us. Then I'm going to tell you how you can configure these times, element times, lead times, crane times, for impact to be able to do this automatically for you. And uh, last but not least, of course, this notification system uh, in the last part of the presentation. So basically, we're saying it like this, it's not a lot, uh, but there really isn't either, because the point is that the software will do most of the work for us. And exactly how it does it, that's what we're going to look at now also. The webinar itself, uh, we're talking about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. I know we set off an hour to this, but it really doesn't take that long. Um, so uh, we still have the time reserved if we get a lot, bunch of questions. You guys just use the questions tab, uh, ask away, and we'll answer them um, either during the webinar or at the end of the webinar, depending on the, the nature of the question. So without further ado, let's look at impact. So now you guys, you should be seeing this small project I have. Uh, some sandwich panels and some hollow core. That's just what I've made. You know, you could make internal walls, balconies, other types of flaps, double T's, whatever it is, but the principle of the software is the same. What I've done now is I've made this little building in my 3D software. I've used Impact Design. If you're using Takla, Revit, whatever, uh, it can be put in to look the same as well. <clears throat> Even if you don't have, you can also import uh, as well. So the first thing I want to do is I want to plan my erection sequencing. But for me to do an optimal erection sequencing, I first want to put in a crane. And then I want to check if that crane can handle the project or if I need maybe two cranes or a different type of crane. So the first thing I'm going to do is inside impact, especially for those of you who already have it, when you're planning cranes out, go in, set the projection to autographic. Perspective means that you'll get this nice 3D perspective as standing and looking on a building. Orthographic means you get like a technical representation of it. Because when I go in and I'll look at the top, then I have this grid and then I can look straight down instead of having this perspective here. So for me, I wanna go in to home here and then you can see I have my crane tab. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the crane and then I'm gonna tell you about the crane. So we take the, 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 the interesting things first and then the boring stuff afterwards. So let me add a crane here. I created a webinar crane. How did I create that? We'll get to that, of course. Crane one, and then give it an insertion point. I'll place it over here. So you can see this red thing here. This is the minimum distance of the crane. So it has zero tons up to five meters. That means you can't carry anything within five meters. 
but then up to 16.9 we can do 14 tons then at 20 11 tons and all the way out to the maximum which where we can only carry two and a half tons how to place cranes well this is actually how to do it so if you go in here and look a little bit you can see i can restrict the crane from faces floors or buildings in this case i don't want to but if you would you will just simply just click it off here you can also restrict angles if you have other buildings in the area that you know you have you've got to check up if those angles will apply you to lift everything uh, or not of course so how do we find out if this crane is good enough other than looking of course at the capacities here or having some sort of uh, rule of thumb well we click here so basically this is not good enough right now because half the elements are red but i'm thinking okay let's look at this one specifically and i'll see it weighs 10.5 tons follow the green line we have a capacity of 6.1 tons here so either i need to add another crane to the project here or move this crane uh, use a mobile crane or something or what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to move this one. First, I'm going to move it too close just for you guys to see what, what happens. And you can see, oh, now we can't carry the ones that are too close. This is, uh, uh, but everything else is fine now. So let's just move it a little bit again. But basically, This is how you control the cranes. So very simple with one crane here. Uh, very simple with two cranes as well. It's the same. You just add another crane. To explain to you just, uh, because we do have the time, how the crane actually works. Let me just go into the settings here and the components and the crane. I double click and I go into my crane. So you can see here is simply line five meter radius capacity ton zero and then a color that's it if i want to create a new crane i click new give it a name new crane new crane and then radius capacity color so very very simple but we don't want to talk about cranes all day now this is fine everything is applicable it can carry all of it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn it off so i can't see it anymore because that makes it easier for me to plan the reason i put up the crane before doing the erection sequencing is actually if i turn on the crane again typically when we lift something with a crane we want to start furthest away from the crane of course so we can move our way towards the crane so for the walls that means that we'll start with either this this or this piece here all the way up through the building and then work our way through either all the way or half and half so that's what i'm going to do and i'm going to do all six floors now so you guys can see what is the actual time that this takes to do to do it double click floor one double click our panels and simply mark them in the order i want to erect them so i'm going to start from this one and move to here to here and from here to here to here. So for me, it's fine. I'll, as long as I start furthest away, I'll finish it up there as well. And I will add them to my erection planning, as you can see down here, add elements. Now we have 10 elements planned. We'll take the hollow course. We'll simply start from that where, there. And then we'll go to floor two, and I'm gonna do the same thing why do i do the same thing again and again well it's different elements is it but also in this case here in this example it's so easy because they're the same all the floors at the uh, almost the first one has some doors where the other ones have windows but this is just a simple example of course but it's easy for me to show you in and easy for you guys to follow of course so almost there with floor four as well let's do five and six and we're actually done with the sequencing 
for our reaction planning here. And for sixth, which is the last one, here we go, add elements and the last of the whole core elements. There we go. So now I have, if I scroll down here, a lot of elements, 150 elements, starting the sequence from one, the one I selected first, that's the one I want to erect first. And you can see here, I can attach a crane if I want to, if I have multiple cranes, it would be a good idea to attach a crane to either one of them. In this case, I have one crane, so there's no point in spending time on it. But what I do, uh, what I will do is, I'm going to set up this erection division here. An erection division is basically, you, you can think of it like an erection crew uh, or the people that actually erected. Why do we need this? Well, this is because this erection crew here for me, I've set in my standard that these guys can work eight hours a day. And why have I done that? Well, that's because uh, comparing the time it takes to erect the elements, add the crane time, uh, then impact will calculate how long it takes to, to build this structure here. So a good check always here, once we've done the, um, the um, direction planning is to to run a simulation here it's very simple but here you can check up is it is everything okay slow it down start it uh, speed it up and so on everything's great here in in my case yeah, or make a video of it of course make a video of it send to your client uh, as, as pascal says of course well then i have it six floors 150 elements uh, the sequence of erection is planned. But there's a lot of other things that is also planned now, because now we gave Impact all the information it needs to plan the uh, project for us. So now uh, I will tell you guys, if you didn't follow along before, now is when you really need to uh, pay close attention. Uh, at least in my opinion, this is very, very interesting, because now we're going to have the software do some things for us, and it's going to uh, automatically fill out five sets of dates on 150 elements. So this is a lot of this is a lot of manual time spent uh, if you don't have a system that can do like this. First of all, I am selecting the elements. I'm going to planning, and then I'm going to uh, then I'm going to uh, calculate the erection dates. In this case here. You know from your client either I need to start the project on that day or I need to finish it on this day. So for me, I like always to start at some point. So we'll say this client, he tells us we need to start April 21st on erecting these elements. And I'll click apply. So now in a split second, you can see we start from the plan direction date of the 21st for one. Then we jump to the 24th because we have Saturday, Sunday in between. If you want to use Saturday and Sunday, you can set it to use it in the system. In my system, I have them as non-working days. You can also manually use them. But basically from the 21st and then at the bottom is the 10th and that finishes it up. When I hit the save button up here, it's going to fill out the delivery date, planned storage date, production date, and when the drawings should be finished. So I'll hit save and we'll give impact a few seconds because now it's going to fill out four sets of dates for 150 elements, like it did with one set of date, of course, before. And after a few seconds, you'll see that it has all this now ready. And what I really want you guys to notice now is this date compared to the other dates. So for example, the erection date here for these elements here, and I can even select them. Oh, sorry, I can even select them here so you can see what this is. If you don't know impact already, these are walls. These are the slabs. So if I go in here, you can see these are the walls on floor one. For me to erect this on the 21st, I need to finish the drawing by the 7th, and I need to produce the element by the 14th. Why? It's because I have a set of rules that says I want my walls to be produced at least five working days or something like this before the um, 
uh, erection. But if we go down to the holocore, you can see this follows along. So the 24th, they need to be finished with the drawings of the 10th. But on the holocores, the drawing needs to be finished on the 3rd, and the production needs to be finished on the 10th, even though the planned erection date is the 24th. And this is because my holocore division in my company, they need two weeks instead of uh, five or six days. And all of this here, uh, well, basically the project is, is actually planned now. Um, all of this here, you can control or help the software control inside the project properties where you can see we have this planning dependencies. And you can see, I haven't filled anything out for beams, columns, but when you get to Holocore, the erection date should be the same as the delivery date. We want to just drive them to site, erect them. But we need them on storage a day before. But nine days before that, I need to produce them, just so I have the lead time, or maybe because I know there's some things that could take a little extra time. And five days before that, the drawings need to be finished. The same when we go to the walls, it's one, four, five instead. So for the walls, I only need a lead time of one week and then another week for the drawings. But basically now, as a project manager, having planned the project, I have not planned where in my factory I'm going to produce the elements, what table, or what bed they're going to be at. The production planners are going to do that in impact production. And uh, out of the scope of this webinar, we have plenty of webinars about it. But for me, for example, the project manager now, that allows me uh, to give the production guys and, and the drawing guys the tools to actually go in and find out what they need to do first. So if I take up and filter the planned drawing date, then I can see, oh, I have uh, the first date I need to finish something here is the 3rd of April, which is about a week from now. So that's pretty soon. There's 15 elements I need to do. And these are basic, I think these are the 15 holocores on floor one. Uh, if we go to floor one, you can see. So basically the holocores on floor one, the drawings need to be finished by the third. That's great. I'll go in and go ahead and do that. And we filtered only floor one here. Let's look at the whole model. And for the fifth, 15 elements, those are also holocore. I can tell you that already because I know the software and what I just did. On the seventh, we suddenly have 23. But that is because it is our walls and probably a few of the holocores that go up, uh, that, need to, that need to go up. And then on the 10th, the rest of the walls. This is because we, we can't erect them all in one day, of course. And then you just simply continue, plan, 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 when you work. So these are like work sets for the drawing department. In the same way as this, when you go to the production, you can, he can create work sets for himself. The 10th, he needs to produce 15 elements. These are connected with each other, of course, but the dates are not. Uh, or they're connected, but they're not the same, of course. So that's the project planning. And I promised that uh, after doing the project planning, I will show you guys a follow up. Simply, you can see I click refresh. Now I have my project, I have my duration. I'm starting on the 3rd of April. And I'm going to finish on the 11th of May. So it's going to take me approximately a month to make this project from start to finish. Super fast, but it's also a small one. I can even go in here and check floor one, holocore, if I'm working in the holocore side of business or sandwich, if I'm working in the sandwich part of the business, when do, when do they need to be finished uh, for floor one here? So this is like the rough, uh, rough one that I promised you before. And this impact will simply maintain, create, change, depending on, uh, on how you work through it. If we don't finish our drawings, if we don't produce the elements on time, it will start to throw in overdues and delays here as well. So we'll get these warnings. The last thing I think I promised is, well, everything's planned here now. So uh, it's very, very, very quick, very simple, uh, very straightforward. We can see we have all the dates for all the elements. And that, that's a little bit more on the technical side, but how does impact know? 
how many elements it can make in one day. Um, and first of all, I showed you guys the dependency on the dates in the settings of the project. But in Impact, we have something here called the standard admin. And in the standard admin, we can control for our different element types, the time it takes to erect. So for example, a holocore here, in my standard, this is just an example. I don't know how fast or how slow you guys are. <laughs> you know yourself, hopefully. Uh, 0.3 hours. So about 18 to 20 minutes for a holocore. Uh, it just takes one unit is one hour in this case here. And for the sandwich panels, one per hour. And as I mentioned before, the erection crew had eight hours to go. So that's how it calculates it. There is one difference though. When I get up a little bit higher here, I can also add lifting time for the crane. And that I've also done. So if we go into the actual building here, settings and check the floor, then you can see these are the heights of the floor, the standard heights of ceilings and windows and so on. Um, but then you can see crane time, extra crane time. So that means on floor number six, every holocore element is going to take those 0.3 hours, 18, 20 minutes as before I mentioned, plus another 18 to 20 minutes to actually get the crane to lift it up to the sixth floor to 14 plus meters in height. It might not take that long. It might take longer. Again, it's just an example. So basically on floor four, five, and six, it adds the time on these so that those floors will take longer. Again, if we look at the IDs and we just scroll through, you can see a tendency that in the beginning, the dates change kind of slow here, more elements per day. When we get a little further down, you can see the dates should start to change very quickly. Fourth, the fifth, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth. So we can only do, uh, in the case of the holocore, half the holocores per day. In the case of the walls, 20, 30% less uh, per day. But that's it. I know when I'm finishing my project now. And um, so uh, that's it for the first part of this webinar, actually. And for the second part, I will uh, let Pascal take over a little bit. So uh, let me make you, you make the presenter, one? Pascal. That's great. Are you sure you want to make Pascal the presenter? Yes, of course. <laughs> Show my screen. All right. I hope you can see my screen here. Oh, I see it. So uh, great. I, I was can. actually uh, working at a little Holocore project. So uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but for now, I got also a little message. It says uh, Boink or something. And here in my up corner, in my project manager, I got this little red dot at my uh, bell. So what's ap actually happened is that my there is a, a notification. And this notification is from another project. Um, and like you see here, it's not the building I'm working at. And I can see there are some things. So my colleague, he is a little bit saying like, you have to follow up with something. So what I'm going to do is to find the right project. And, uh, and I'm opening this here. What I can do here to uh, follow up, um, I found some strange geometry. So let's see what he's meaning. This one, and you can see here in my model. Uh, let's take it, make it a little bit smaller. Oh. So let's do, oh, I am only working at my laptop, so I have not that many places at my screen, but here you can see, while I'm clicking on this button here, it's also finding these elements. So actually it's giving me an easy overview, what I have to do, what element I have to do, etc. 
um, otherwise. What I want to show you today is that I also can make it at myself. So what I'm going to do is uh, something wrong with this corner here, and I will select the two elements, right click on the, on the elements, and click on add notification. So I will write uh, corner one. Details of the corner. Set an attachment like you saw before. I don't want to do it because I didn't make an attachment. Um, yeah, now I want to uh, just receive this. So I want to add Nikolai and Thomas and Linus. So create. What's happening now is sending an email down to my colleagues. So here I got already something that uh, that my e email is uh, being made now and uh, it sends the email out to my colleagues. So um, maybe you yeah. guys, if you were fast. You could see me looking away from the screen while Pascal was explaining the disorders. Uh, no, sorry, disorders. The the notifications, but that's because uh, I was I want uh, Pascal to plan the balconies in the project. You can click the picture, Pascal. Let's just have these. Yeah. See. Yeah. So now he can of course chat back to me, and say uh, he's on it or something. <laughs> And we can chat back and forth like that a little bit. Um, but 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 yeah. very importantly, we can do these emails. And Pascal says we can find the elements directly. And uh, the last thing is that everything we go we're doing in here, it gets logged into the project and into the software. So we don't have to go find that email. We don't have to remember the day after what Nikolai asked me to do uh, when he came and. Uh, uh, poke me on the shoulder uh, or whatever. So, uh, so you said I hadn't need to plan them. Okay, I will do that. So I think Pascal is th thinking. Oh, where should I put my balconies? Uh -huh. Which part of the factory? Yep. Done. Plan for production. That's it. So That's now it. I'm going back. Yeah. Oh, where's my notification now? Oh, it's gone there. Don't oh, write down. That's it. Yeah. That's it for the webinar, actually, as well. Um, <laughs> I know I said half an hour to uh, 45 minutes, and it's been 28 minutes. <laughs> oh my God, this is very it's close, quick. right? But if you guys want to use this as a training webinar, the only thing you have to do is go in and look at it and pause it when, this, when the thing you don't know is. Um, and if you're coming to get to know a little bit more about impact, of course, we hope uh, the webinar helped you with that. And of course, we have plenty of other webinars uh, uh, coming also. Um, the next one, which is going to be in about one month, is going to be about balconies actually so uh so that's one of the reasons yeah, I was detailing thinking, uh, balconies, uh, 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 talk about balconies exactly as pascal says here so let me see if i can share my screen again pascal because i just want to show people where they can sign up for the next webinar if somebody are interested in balconies i don't know if you guys are or detailing for that matter but uh yeah at least we'll give you the opportunity for it. So what you do is you go into strewsoft.com and you go into impact. I can start from the start, go to impact, go to webinars. And then we have recorded webinars. We have today's webinar. This is just a selection of, of some recorded webinars. Go to YouTube if you want everything right through soft there. Um, today's webinar. 
And then on April 19th, how to 3D model and detail precast balconies. So if you guys are interested, you can jump in there, of course. Otherwise, YouTube, Shrewsoft on YouTube. And uh, in there, you'll find impact. In there, you'll find webinars, uh, tons of webinars, tons of tips and material. And you're very welcome to write us an email, give us a call, or even write a question. When I'm looking at the questions tab, we haven't had any questions in this webinar. So I'm thinking either we've been very good at explaining it, or we've been very good at explaining it. So that's it for today, I think, guys and uh, hopefully see some of you in the next webinar it's going to be hosted by our colleague linus and uh, maybe pascal or i will join in um just to have a little bit fun but um, but we'll see when we get there so thanks for it guys we'll conclude Thank you guys here and see you on the other side bye 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 bye